now we're back uh, right here with the ballot uh, 2023. It's a great uh, Wednesday morning. To some people and to others, you probably might not say it's great. However, on Saturday, the 25th of February, millions of Nigerians trooped out to elect the next president and National Assembly members. Earlier this morning, the presidential candidate of the old Progressive Congress, APC, has been declared the winner of the just concluded elections by the Independent National Electoral Commission. We'll be discussing, you know, um, the alleged inconsistencies that are called throughout the elections on the show this morning. My name is Messi Ebopo, and welcome to March. <laughs> and indeed, my name is Kofi Bartels. It's great to be here with you at uh, beautiful, beautiful morning. And of course, uh, we won't waste time at all to uh, inform you that the, um, of course, the All Progressive Congress, Bola Mektinu, has been declared winner uh, by the Independent National Electoral Commission, uh, the National Returning Officer of INEC right there in Abuja, uh, who is also, incidentally, the chairman uh, of uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, um, announcing uh, that result. And, of course, um, it's signaling renewed hope uh, for Nigeria and, of course, a new, um, a new dawn for the country. If you want to look at um, uh, the fact that this is the first uh, a new president and it's not going to be a returning officer or returning president, then, of course, you know that this uh, is a new time. About uh, two to three hours ago, um, for those who were still awake, I had to close my eyes a bit. I couldn't keep up with, uh, you know, what they were doing there at INEC. I mean, they were just counting their thing and we were just waiting, you know. But, um, of course, Bala Mitinubu declared winner, um, former governor of Lagos State. Uh, he polled 8,794,726 uh, votes to win the 2023 presidential election. Um, all right, uh, and of course, uh, the other Satiko Bwakar came in second um, uh, with, um, okay, uh, Obi, Peter Obi, uh, the candidate of Labour Party, uh, coming in uh, third. Apart from uh, Tinbu, Atiku, and Obi, other candidates that um, were on the ballot included uh, Dumebi Kachiku of uh, the ADC, uh, the P, the AAC's um, Omoele Shore, uh, Kola Biola of the People's Redemption Party, um, uh, Adewole Adebayo uh, of the Social Democratic Party. That one, we didn't know where he was again because I think <laughs> at some point he began to Why are you making me laugh so yeah to call <laughs> for um, people to the candidates at Tiku and Obi to give um, uh, Bolatin a call and, and congratulate him. So I think he yeah, the SCP candidate may have as you know aligned with the APC candidate, which is uh, his right. Uh, Malik Ado Ibrahim of the Young Progressives Party, uh, Professor Christopher Imumelen or Imumelen of Accord Party, Professor Peter Umiadi of the All Progressives Grand Alliance, Grand Alliance and uh, Yusuf Maman Dantali of the Allied People's Movement. There are a list of other people uh, out there that we wouldn't want to go into. Maybe as time goes on, we will uh, we'll look at that. But the last one of the last states to bring their results in last this morning, actually, What's River State? Um, if you want to talk about River State, we won't go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Messi, I, I, I Messi, um, you know, I, I mean, I'm a journalist. We are all journalists, and most times we we just report what we we we, we see. And um, I can report um, that what happened in River State was pure daylight robbery. Coffee, yeah. you know, I, yeah, I mean, I, I can report. I, why, why I, 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 saw, I saw, I saw you. It, it was daylight robbery. And, I, I, you I, know, saw your, I saw your tweet on okay. uh, Twitter. Okay. I saw your tweet as, I mean, I wouldn't say tweet, <laughs> but I also saw your post on Facebook. You know, and I God. saw all of that. And I saw, you know, the drama uh, surrounding the officer. I, I saw everything that okay, I they, saw. They, 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 okay, so that, she's talking about um, a Labour Party, uh, um, the Labour Party's... Um, uh, State agent. state agent, who instead is the chairman of the Labour Party in, in River State. And basically, what happened in River State? Because River State in 2019 also was the last state to send in its result. You know, and um, so as you wonder why River State, which is just uh, in the southern part of the country, not far from Lagos, who sent its result in before other states, even like Kano State that has more voters, you know, and is up north. Have you ever been to Kano before? You know, you so, so, but, but in, in this, have you been to Kano before? But, but in this conversation... Messi, the reason I'm asking if you've been to Kano before, sorry, Sorry, is that um, for you to move from one local government to another, even by road, okay? 
It's like you're traveling to another country. So, I, I mean, it, which, which would be the crux of our conversation? And, the, and, and that's as, as to whether people really needed to be available, you know, travel. Because originally, the conversation that we have had over time with the Electoral Act and what have you and INEC was that results will be transmitted from the polling unit. So as people are casting their votes, the result will be up, you know, uploaded. So um, I, I really don't know how to explain all that had happened. And so when you bring the question of uh, distance and what have you, are we even supposed to be talking about the distance? Is it that well, they had to travel well, to be let me available? Just, let me just quickly, quickly before bringing to Nicola, that, that, that's what we're talking about, you know. <laughs> you know <laughs> but let, let me quickly bring into the before I do that, uh, just to give, because I, I, if I don't give any detail of this thing I'm saying, it might not be uh, suitable with our viewers. But why I said River State was daylight robbery it was because uh, a reporter that I um, spoke to yesterday told me, um, I mean, the trusted source, Give me a breakdown. He told me that it was daylight robbery because when they re announced the result for the remaining local government area, that was the last local government area that uh, took them three days to bring the results. Now, the INEC State Coalition Center is in Port Harcourt. This is Obiapo local government area, which is still in Port Harcourt. Mm -hmm. Now, it took three days for the results from a Port Harcourt local, a local government area in Port Harcourt to arrive Port Harcourt. Just like it took about three days for the Abuja re result to arrive Abuja, so the, 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 the reporters, you know, uh, a reporter there told told me that uh, they didn't know the whereabouts of the local government coalition officer. He was nowhere to be found, and even the political parties who tried to track him down after the voting on Saturday and were chased away by my thugs, political thugs who whisked away the INEC officials, they didn't know where he was. Now, if you're doing the four levels of coalition that the um, INEC chairman talked about, ward level, local government level, state level, national level. At each level of coalition, there should be a party agent. If they have to raise objections, they raise objections. And of course, even from the polling unit level, they are allowed to recount the vote once, the ballot paper, once, another time, recount for any party that has issues with the result. Now, um, the man, this Professor Cleave is his name, arrived the INEC um, State Coalition Center in a tinted vehicle with no number plate. And that reporter says that he feels and believes that that is a government vehicle. He was also with uh, in a company of heavily armed police escorts and DSS details. Now, from our reporter in Port Harcourt, they say that INEC never gave the man such heavy escorts. He was also so, accompanied so, by, so, Messi, sorry, he was also accompanied by the government house press corps who, um, who uh, um, followed him into the, the building, the premises, yesterday night. Now, the state coalition officer in River State had to said he wasn't going to announce any result anymore because of threats to his life. And he made the resident electoral commissioner in River State come out to address the press there at the state coalition center to, us, to tell them that he, the state coalition officer, is not in charge of how the results are written. That he's only there to tally the results. That was only when, you know, sorry, Messi, let me just make the passing information. That was when the state coalition officer now agreed to come continue because he made it a point to say, see, I'm not in charge of what results are written. I'm only in charge or how the election is conducted. I'm only in charge of, you know, receiving the results and announcing what we add, we collate. He even had to edit his Facebook post about four times to say, me, I know they owe a hair, so that people will stop threatening him. Now, he also made sure that the local government coalition officer who came in with those results, um, which turned the votes in River State in favor of the APC, he made sure that he said he agreed that he was responsible for those results and that those results, if anything happens, he should be held accountable. You know, So these are some of the things going on in River State. And my reporter said as far as the results were announced, PDP had about 360-something votes in the entire Obia local government area. He told me yesterday that when that was announced, that everybody in the, in the, in the hall laughed, started laughing. Ha, ha, ha. That even the state coalition chairman started laughing. He was laughing because it is impossible from what they saw on the field on Saturday, Mercy, for the PDP to have 368 votes in the presidential election in River State. So the reporter concluded, um, based on the preponderance of evidence before them, that it was daylight robbery. But this is the same result that Professor Mahmoud Yakubu has re accepted and said there's nothing he can but, do but, about but, it. But, but, in other words, he says his hands are tied.
Kofi, um, which is the crux of the conversation? Which is the reason why you have a lot of people who are protesting? Uh, and, and at the end of the day, the conversation is, if you have the Electoral Act, which stipulates how elections should be conducted, and the Constitution, the, the big question here is, the 2023 elections, whether conducted in accordance with the 2022 Electoral Act as amended and the Constitution, did we follow the law, you know, to the latter? There's been a lot of, you know, complaints. Uh, these are not just mere speculations, but you have evidence to all of this fact. And uh, I, I, I mean, if you, you, you look at the polls of the people and, and you go out there to feel the polls of the people, because it's mostly the people. So, so the fact that whether the results uh, for River State is very close, you know, to the FCT and, you know, all of that, should, should, should we even be talking about that? Because what was the mode of transmitting the results from the elections? It was supposed to be from the polling unit. But the reports across almost every part of, you know, the Federation is that um, results were not uploaded. And when you wake up and say you couldn't find the uh, electoral, I mean, the agent at the time for a polling unit for how many days, and all of a sudden he resurfaced, were well, these results uploaded? Was that what we were supposed to It was very explicit. It was really explicit. I mean, there are a lot of evidence and conversation, you know, to that. Uh, it's not even rocket science. It wasn't written in Swahili. I'm sure that the Electoral Act was not written in Swahili. But this is when we joined Tunde Kolawale, uh, a legal practitioner, uh, to share his thoughts on the entire electoral process and the, the fact that the uh, former governor of legal state, Ashiwa Jubal Tunde has been declared the winner by the umpire, that's INEC. Uh, Tunde Kolawale, it's good to have you join us this morning. It's a beautiful uh, Wednesday morning and it's the 1st of March. Good morning. Uh, Tunde, it's good to have you join us this morning. It's a very first day in March. Uh, happy New Year. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yes, please. I hope the election broadcast hasn't been too strenuous for all of you. Uh, well, I, I quite didn't get you, but um, that's okay. L let's head straight to the conversation. Uh, really, how do you feel with the declaration of uh, Ashiwaju Bola Ahmed Tunubu, who is the uh, or who was, you know, the presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress. Uh, he was declared just uh, why men slept as the winner of these elections. How I react to the election of Ashwat Bola Nakinubu? Am I right? Yes, please, if you can hear me. What? Well, uh, any, any observer would have seen it uh, coming. All the structures, the machinery of state, and all those things it is that make people win election in Nigeria when in his favor. Uh, his party, the APC, is at the center, is the ruling party, the party at the federal level. He also has a 27 governors behind him. Uh, furthermore, most times people hardly use their own money to fight and win election in Nigeria. It is the safe resources that is deployed in such an exercise. So if you have the federal money behind you, if you have the internal governors behind you, if you also have the apparatus of the, the coercive apparatus of the state, the police, the DSS, the army, and all that, all uh, uh, behind you, chances are that you might uh, easily win uh, the election. But notwithstanding, we should uh, give credit to him uh, to the extent that he is an active politician. Uh, he is also a man who is very good in strategy and tactics. Uh, furthermore, the opposition that was already in the uh, were one, uh, just uh, only the couple to get on the look at the legal parties. It's not a coercive party. It's a party that was uh, originally coupled together by young people of Nigeria as a kind of uh, demonstration uh, of their anger and displeasure with the Nigerian state and how the Nigerian state is being uh, managed. The PDP has an interesting a kind of internal war that uh, was ravaging their structure until the very last minute that the elections uh, started. I suspect that all these things are for them, for what we hope in favor of as well as the ball and the book. 
But if that can fit in a remote realize it must be low. Now this election has been too divisive. Uh, it has polarized the country or divided it or split the country into, into three parts. Uh, even though unevenly you have the southwest standing now and it's soon you have the south standing on the boats and then you also have the, the, the north and then between you have the little belt and the south south. It's been a highly polarizing election. In fact, it could be said that Nigeria is now like a broken egg. How much was going to mess you know, is going to put the eggs back together? Uh, we require a lot of tact, a lot of wisdom, and a lot of uh, diplomacy. But um, it is in our collective interest that the country is uh, put together the way it should be. Anybody watching what is happening in Ukraine today would not wish or dream that no another should be done in Nigeria. So as lawyers too, we believe in the people's side of the law. Whoever feels agreed about it, the measure about the APC and women. So in the interest of peace, approach the court for the interpretation of the law, let the their anger and grievance, and the, whatever decision that the court arrives at the end of the day, we should abide um, uh, by it. Uh, that is our injunction to them. For INEC, I think INEC has done a very, very poor job. And uh, we hardly can also give money I make uh, too much in the sense that, uh, like I said, that in your studio when I was there during the election day, until the very last minute, I make was still going cap in hand to beg uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria to release funds for her to be able to conduct the elections. Furthermore, there was a scarcity of uh, fuel. Secondly, some of the machinery is really divided, they give up, or whatever they call it. That was the soil, uh, didn't uh, function optimally. Like we saw it function in the place by chaos, no paper, they didn't function optimally. Could it be that I never had the resources on time to train those who would use those uh, uh, gadgets and devices to conduct uh, the election? Then another issue that this election has raised is uh, the divider testing. What the electoral rule says is that uh, the paper was that might be conducted the different polling booth. We be a backup, and that is the technology the drivers that we are going to that going to we are going to rely more on. As soon as the elections are conducted, votes are cast and then recorded. The driver will use to transmit the the election results to the INEC server in Abuja, and then it's automatically be uh, tabulating and collating and transmitting those results. But lo and behold, why the drivers are still uh, all very uh, woefully. So what has happened? We think the use of bypass in Osho State and in the TT State, and then it is at the national level. Could it be that is because of um, the large uh, landmass that the uh, INEC has to cover? Could it be logistical challenges? Could it be lack of money? Could it be lack of fuel? Could it even be the inability of the service provider, the MTNs of this world, the airfares, and then the Gulukar comes? That failed um, uh, INEC. You know, get it as good as mine. As the situation unfolds gradually, we begin to get grip with what really happened during this election. But the truth of the matter is that whatever injuries, whatever malfeasance, whatever shortcomings, whatever deficiency that we saw this election, were things that we inflicted on ourselves, they were self inflicted injuries, which must also have happened. If you can conduct the election since 1999, I mean, there are almost there to 30 years. By now, you should be getting free. You should be coming the masters of the election. But again, uh, Nigerian politicians are incorrigible elements. As soon as you take one step to beat them at their games and all that, they will take 10, 20 steps to really make sure that whatever plans you put in place doesn't uh, work. I begin to fear. But we might not know if we have the election in Nigeria again in a long, long time to come. Your attention to um, the the uh, statement or the report released by the um, EU Observer Group, uh, who came to cover the election. It was a, a damning report. Um, uh, total opposite of that, this was what was put out by AU and ECOWAS. But we'll leave the AU and ECOWAS because if they knew any better, Africa won't be where it is. So let's leave those people for now. Um, but the EU mission, uh, ob ob election ob observation mission to Nigeria 
uh, released um, uh, its first preliminary uh, statement. They said the election was held on schedule, but lack of transparency and operational failures reduced trust in the process and even went ahead to challenge the right of many to vote. Um, if you read the details, it's more damning than what even this one I read said. Um, is Bola Metinbu, can he claim to be uh, le the legitimate president of Nigeria, looking at uh, what these observers are saying, that uh, people uh, had their right to vote challenged? And um, I mean, uh, uh, there was lack of transparency and uh, there were operational failures as well. Sorry, I didn't quite get that. Can you summarize it? Okay, I'm saying looking at the, the report, it, it's a damning report, the first preliminary report put out by the European Union Election Observation Mission to Nigeria, uh, which said that the elections held on schedule, uh, but lack of transparency and operational failures uh, reduced trust in the process and challenged the right to vote, is what they're saying. And uh, that they, they criticized the stages of the election up until the tabulation of results, basically saying that um, people uh, could not express their will and that the election cannot be said to be valid. That's basically what it's saying. So looking at this report by the EU, um, which has put a big question mark on the results of the presidential election, can the winner, as declared by Anik, um, can he uh, say he's legitimately the president of Nigeria? You're a lawyer, so tell us what you think. Um, I thought legitimacy now, based on the on on the. I opinion. haven't. Uh, I, I have not read the full report of the EU, but the preliminary report that I read and know that they made mention of the three things and what as well, uh, and also said that and this by and large, uh, uh, more Nigerians had the opportunity to cast their votes for the candidates of uh, of their choice. But the truth of the matter is that I'm not too enamored. I hardly want to kind of uh, play too much premium on uh, whatever any of these uh, nations of that uh, say. Most of them are diplomats representing their respective countries and all that. And you and I know that diplomats hardly will come out uh, uh, to talk in a very uh, a blank manner. They speak what is called a diplomat. Uh, when they tell you the thing is the free, you can be sure that you will attend it. The black gray thing would attend it was more black than uh, being uh, gray. But, like I said, for them, I mean, more importantly, too, most of these elections that are based in the city capital, they were based uh, in the local government headquarters. They hardly could go into the hinterland because of things. All over the places and all that. So if you say the place like Lagos and then Algeria and then in Potaco, and you begin to use that to rationalize, to begin to make conjecture and to reach conclusions with regard to more than 770 uh, local government that we have in the country and more than 17,000 or 17,000 polling booths all over the places and Let's talk about the call by the opposition parties. Uh, we have seen the uh, Labour Party, the PDP, the NMPP uh, calling for the cancellation of this result because it was not conducted in accordance with the law. Kola Wale, can you hear me? Uh, well, um, we're just uh, hoping that we have uh, a reconnection with Tunde Kalawali and then we'll continue with our thoughts. But um, uh, some of the developments from the 2023 election, presidential and national assembly, but mostly is that a lot of persons are calling for, not just uh, the, those in the opposition party. I mean, uh, you have the uh, PDP, you have the Labour Party, you have the NMPP, but a lot of Nigerians uh, have taken out some in protest asking that this elections be cancelled and this was this call was made while the national coalition center uh, was very open active putting out the result has been brought out by different starter but um uh, we will you know continue to have this conversation uh despite 
you know, the outcome because there's several uh, instances. I mean, a lot of uh, concerns that have been raised. And people say that if you have the Electoral Act, there's also another part of this conversation, Kofi, uh, where we haven't talked about, where uh, if you remember Mike Igini, he made reference to uh, whoever becomes elected, part of the Electoral Act, that you have to meet, uh, you know, through third of it, uh, saying you have to have 25% in 24 states mm. of the Federation. Okay. Before I, you're I'm being told we have to call it back on the line. Um, so so, so we'll go back to him. Are you there? Can you hear us, please? Okay. Kola Wale, can you hear us? Hello, I'm hearing you. All right. Um, today, please stay with us because we would like to um, just listen to the acceptance speech of the uh, um, president-elect of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, uh, Shiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu of the All Progressives Congress. When we come back, we'll talk some more with you. Please stay. The youth, I read you first. Let me repeat that I hear you loud and clear. What do I say? Loud and clear. Whatever the cops, we are going to charge the path together. We are going to embark on this journey together. United. No one is too small to be creative. Inshallah. We we walk together. Ah, we pay attention. Undivided attention to your education. We we be creative. Credit will be available. Education loan will be available. Four years course will be four years course. No more strike. Your universities will have the autonomy to be able to upgrade your slumbers and be creative. No more selling of handouts. They must be authors. They must write and create for the nation. I know where it pains. And believe me, you will see the reward of your election. This is a serious mandate. I hereby accept it. That money to serve you, be your servant, and not be your leader. To work with you and make Nigeria a great country. I take this opportunity also again to appeal to my fellow contestants to let us team up together. It is the only nation we have, it is one country. And we must build together. We work together to put broken pieces together. We must work for the unity, happiness, and harmony. We not, must not act like that orchestra that there's no direction of a conductor. We will, and we have elected a conductor named President-elect. 
Let's collaborate to create a symphony that will make the rhythm of music and prosperity an history for our country. We have what it takes. We have what is needed. Knowledge, creativity, the mind, determination. We are the same country performing wonders in other countries. We can do it here. I promise I work with you to make Nigeria the destination of returning home to contribute to the development of our country. This is a speech. And then, then that's uh, the exception speech of the president-elect of the All Progressive Congress, Bola Ahmed Tunubu, right there, uh, yeah. with his wife, uh, Remy. President-elect of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And with okay. his dear wife, yes, Remy Tunubu, right there. But uh, Tunde Kola, well, if you can still hear us, just before we get to that speech and, you know, uh, get your thoughts on it, really, uh, I I'd like you yeah. to quickly respond to the thoughts of Mr. President, uh, President Mohammed mm -hmm. Buhari, as to the... Uh, he said that the election that produced uh, Tinubu as president uh, is flawed. And he's also encouraged the parties, those who are involved, the PDP, the Liberal Party, and other parties, you know, to uh, approach the court and challenge the process as long as they have uh, the, you know, as long as they have the evidence. Can you summarize that again, please? So I'd like you to share your thoughts on Mr. President's uh, position. He's uh, admitted, I mean, that the, the process that brought uh, the president-elect, Tunubu, is flawed. And he's also encouraging or has encouraged those in the opposition to approach the court to seek and challenge the process as long as they have the evidence. The speech of uh, Mr. President elect is a beautiful one. Tunde Kola Wale, that, that's not what I'm asking. I'm asking you to react to the thoughts of the president, who is very incumbent, President Mohammed Buhari. I'm saying before we get to the speech of the president elect, let's talk about the thoughts of Mr. President, uh, where he, he communicated that via his aid, and he's accepted that the process that produced. The president-elect is flawed. He's encouraged the PDP, the Labour Party, and others to approach the court of law and challenge the irregularities and the shortcomings of this election, the lack of transparency. I think this is the way, I mean, what you should expect uh, from President Buhari, if I get to right. Uh, this is what we've been saying this morning, that uh, as law-abiding citizens, and know that we should uh, not encourage people to resort to self-help. Whoever has his facts and figures, you know, certain things have not been done properly, or there is no compliance uh, with the electoral, with the constitution, and then with INEC regulations, they should uh, go to court and challenge the, the election uh, results. Whatever facts the, the, the election petition tribunals come up with and know that, the government in power will have no option. Other than before uh, the decision of the election petition uh, 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 tribunal. Uh, but um, because to do otherwise, uh, be an, and I must say, we require to praise uh, President Mohammed Buhari uh, for what uh, we are saying with this uh, uh, election. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, at least, why has not seen any overt action, uh, any apparently overt action? on the part of Mr. President to influence the outcome of the election. Say, for example, uh, somebody defeated the president in his own state of uh, Katsina. In the past, that wouldn't have happened. Also, look at even the man who won the presidency, then defeated the Lagos. In the past, that wouldn't have uh, been possible. And also, look at what happened in Kaduna, where we fire the enforcement with the 
uh, uh, Cardinal to the APC. He was badly one of in those places. Without the transparency, without the commitment of Mr. President to at least the substantially free election, those uh, things that we have seen, some of these three places that I've mentioned, would have been uh, very difficult. The president is in good case, so we call it those who are disagreeing with the result of this election to approach the election. Right, uh, we've lost to Nicola Ole. I was going to ask, we're going to go on to ask him what a, a bulletin with presidency will be like and um, what he we should expect. I mean, the presidential candidate of the Upper Progressive Congress, uh, president elect of Nigeria, uh, gave some, some mixed and interesting points and I think uh, commendable points in his speech. Um, he said that he's profoundly humbled uh, uh, that uh, he's been elected to serve as the 16th president uh, of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Maybe we can just roll that as uh, And uh, he says it's a shining moment in the life of um, any man, an affirmation of uh, uh, democratic experience from my heart. I say thank you with the words of Bola I forget he said this has been a lifelong dream to be the president of Nigeria. I think the positive from this is that um, he's shown that if you have a dream, you know, you can achieve it. You know, so if you want to be the president, you can get there. Uh, how? Yeah, yes. And um, uh, how, you're asking me? Um, it depends on you. But... Um, he, he says something very interesting, Mercy. He says, whether you are batified, whether you are articulated, whether you are obedient or conquasia or have any other political affiliation, you voted for a better, more hopeful nation. And I thank you uh, for your participation and education to our democracy. So he's even reaching out and thanking obedience. He's thanking articulated, he's thanking conquasias, um, and indeed his base, the batifieds. Which is a quite uh, hard one. He's now making some promises. He says, you decided to place your trust in the democratic vision of a Nigeria uh, founded on shared prosperity and one nurtured by the ideals of unity, justice, peace, and tolerance. He says, this is a promise he made. Renewed hope has dawned in Nigeria. A message is what he said. Quite interesting uh, uh, thoughts. But he, he also had some words for the electoral umpire, INEC. I think also a way of bringing credibility to the process through this speech. He says, uh, we commend INEC for running a free and fair election. He says the lapses, he acknowledges that there were some lapses. You know, he says the lapses that did occur were relatively few in number and were immaterial to the final outcome. Um, see, these are certain speeches um, uh, that the politicians make. Uh, most times they used to give legitimacy to to their victory, you know, doesn't do anything to take away that they've won. But we have to Nicola Ole back of the line. And Mr. Nicola Ole, if you're there, um, let's look at the speech of um, uh, uh, the, the winner, the declared winner of the election. He said that um, he's reaching out to those who voted for his opponents and thanking them as well. What do you think this means, you know, for um, the, the country moving forward? Hello, Mr. Kolawole, can you hear me, please? Okay. I'm hearing you. Are you hearing me? Yeah, loud and clear. Nice to have you back. I don't know if you're using beavers to call us. Hey. I'm hearing you. Are you hearing me? Yes, I hope uh, it's not a beavers uh, uh, control me to reach out to you <laughs> because then we won't be surprised that these issues are happening. So I'm saying the acceptance speech of um, the uh, president-elect uh, declared this morning yeah, by INEC. He... Yes, yes, yes. Can you hear me, sir? So that's what I was talking about. Yes, so, so he's made some statements. The first I'd like you to talk about is um, he's reaching out, he's thanking uh, Batifides, that's his supporters, but also thanking articulated obedience, conquerors, and those who voted for other parties. What do you think this means for the country moving forward? Well, what I would just say is that uh, kind of uh, adumbration is that. Um, the speech of uh, the president elect, uh, my humble opinion is that they, when you are the man as president, you require to begin to make speeches like a statesman, uh, like a diplomat. And then you also have to be very humble uh, and victory, so as not to further impugn uh, passion. Uh, when two, three people fight for a position, 
It's uh, elementary logic that only one person will get it. And the other people will have to speak their sword and uh, live to fight uh, uh, another day. Uh, as you are used to, when you look at it critically, I think it's continuatory and uh, it is soothing. And it's also the kind of speech that uh, one would expect uh, from him. Uh, furthermore, he's beginning to make some promises. I hope he's able to walk the talk uh, when he gets in there. Remember that when Buhari also came in, he said it will be for everybody and uh, will not be for nobody. And then we held on, I mean, we held on to that and all that. But the performance of the President Buhari uh, in so many areas tended to negate the speech that he made when he was being sworn in as uh, Mr. President. It is our prayer and hope that Ashwadi's speech will be different or that his own behavior will be different from what we have seen with other the president elect uh, uh, in the past. The gratifying thing about Ashwadi is that um, he has a way, uh, give it to him, uh, whether you like it or you don't like it or not. At least he has a way of assembling some of the best brains and then putting them to task. And then the structure that he has put in place in Lagos, um, uh, by and now, when you compare Lagos with other states of the federation, it's still working. The Lagos State Assembly is the most proactive uh, assembly in Lagos. The executive arm of government in Lagos is also the most proactive executive arm of government uh, in Nigeria. And uh, you could say maybe because they have money to spend. But I tell you that uh, there are other states that also have money to spend who are not performing like Lagos State. Take River State, for example. Take Bayesa, for example, take Delta, for example, they also have enormous resources in their hands. But the kind of results you get in those places, they are not uh, compared to the landmark you also have. If not, you can compare to what you are getting um, in Lagos. So if Ashwaj is able to assemble the kind of things and think tanks that he, had, he was able to assemble in Lagos when he was governor, and which is still intact and working to today, Nigeria may be uh, uh, better for it. My, the problem he would have, uh, seriously speaking, is that the country with due respect to the managers of the country is that the country is now less deep in debt. The country can be said to be bankrupt. I is going to take the country out of the indebtedness. Uh, it, uh, it will take a miracle to be able to do that. Of course, we also have insecurity, which is bleeding the country, not just in terms of human resources, in terms of life that can bring lost but also in terms of material resources, the quantum of money that we are spending for security, to keep the soldiers, to provide them and ammunition, to keep them on the field and to keep them at war at you, and do so many of that, to import um, uh, machinery, arms and ammunition and all that. All these things are bleeding the country. It is my prayer that you will find a solution to some of these things, so that you'll be able to free some of these resources, to be able to plow them into education, into health, into infrastructure, and uh, into overall development of the country. And one other area I think you have to pay attention to is the out of school children in the northern part of the country. Until we're able to solve that problem, we will make sure that all the children that are born in Nigeria, whether in Bayes, whether in Sokoto, in Kaduna, and other, we at least have education up to secondary school level. University could be optional, but primary school to secondary school should be not negotiable for all children of Nigeria. You could decide to go to university at any time in your life, or even not to go at all. It is not compulsory. I know so many people never went to university. They turned out to be some of the best writers, some of the best philosophers, and some of the best even uh, engineers that you have uh, uh, all over the place. Kola, Wale, we we, we have marry to all these things together, so as to be able to get a good result for the country. I wish him the best of luck, and I congratulate him. All right, that, that's very fantastic of you. Thank you so much for being part of the battle. Uh, we do appreciate your thoughts and your time. Of course, you we, uh, we look forward to have you. Uh, and uh, your colleague, is he here? Yes, he's still here. All right. Um, All right. Thank you so much. My to you. <laughs> we appreciate your time to, and congratulations uh, to you as well. Um, um, thank you. Yes, thank you. Yes, indeed. All right, we have to go. Uh, mercy, it's, um, it's, uh, it's one of those... Uh, days where there will be a lot of celebration and of course um, jubilation in town and uh, we will definitely be sending our reporters out there and um, to see 
what the the polls of the people is and what the reaction. Okay, I like, saw. If, if if what if they report that there's no jubilation, then there is. There is. There as, is. As but early as people as, on my on my timeline on I, that I, as, this, as early as this morning, yeah, uh, I saw some uh, you know some boys you know, those, yes, yes. you know so on the streets. They were already taking cigarettes and, and you know how, yes, they were yes. chanting. But for us in Lagos, I think we 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 would jubilate more than any other state. Because I have no idea. Our, our city boy is now president. Okay. I'll make my way to Alaosa this morning, see if I can join any party. You know, any of my APC, uh, you know, viewers who want to invite me, you know, to eat maybe Amala. Yes, I won't be, I won't be, I won't reject it. We have but, to go. Yeah. Okay, that's because we need to join the newsroom uh, in the next four minutes. Thank you so much. We'll okay. be right back to talk some more. And when we return, it'll be time for us to talk sports. Please stay with us. Good morning.